But I mean, I'm contrasting this with cold. Yeah. And so well, that's a difference. Are you yeah. going cold and then 260? I'm a wimp. I, I start in the cold for a minute, then I go into the sauna, then back into the cold for two minutes, back into the sauna, then three but minutes. But you're not a cold. wimp. Why are you saying that? Well, listen, if I were tougher, I'd go five minutes in the cold straight off. Yeah. But I just had Susanna Soberg out for, uh, for a podcast, um, and she taught me some really interesting things. First of all, this has really helped. I did this. We this should explain that she's the woman who created the Soberg principle. Yeah. And yeah. Susanna Soberg uh, did her PhD um, in Denmark is, I, I think, one of the best scientists in terms of deliberate cold exposure and its benefits because she, she actually did something that's remarkable, it, not just in that field, but overall, which is that she employed real world type ex experiences and exercise of deliberate cold and sauna and turned it into a very rigorous study of brown fat thermogenesis, which is this, this sort of think of it as sort of your, like the oil in the candle of your body increases mitochondrial function and thermogenesis heats you up metabolism, uh, subjective well-being, sleep, et cetera. She did all of that and published this in Cell Reports Medicine. And I realize it's just one study, but to do the studies on humans is hard. To do it with multiple variables is even harder. And to do it in a real world context is even harder. So what she showed was that if people get 11 minutes of deliberate cold exposure per week total, and this is divided up into sessions of one to three minutes or four minutes even. So it's not 11 minutes all at once. They fundamentally change the amount of brown fat that they have, which means they fundamentally change the number of mitochondria in the brown fat, which means they fundamentally change their thermogenic properties of their body, and increase their metabolism. Now, the, the people who don't like cold say, well, the increase in metabolism wasn't enough to offset more than a few bites of a bagel or something. But that's not the point, really. What she also showed was that this increase in thermogenesis allowed people to be more comfortable in cold environments, even when they're not in the cold. And then people say, well, who cares, right? I'll throw on a, a jacket. Ah, but what she was able to show is that the ability to be comfortable in the cold correlates with a bunch of other important immune functions and metabolic functions and insulin sensitivity, which is a good thing. And the inability to do that is likely to not be healthy for us. And she also showed that 57 minutes per week is the threshold for sauna. So if people get 57 minutes per week of uncomfortably warm but safe sauna exposure, they can get very similar effects. And, it, and then that gave rise to this question I always said, do you end with cold or do you end with heat? And she said, end with cold because then your body's forced to warm itself back up. Mm. And that's what's now called the Soberg principle, which is when you end with cold, your body has to use its natural machinery to heat back up. In talking to her recently, I learned some really interesting things that I've been incorporating. First of all, I've always avoided putting my head under until the very end in the cold turns out that if you put your face in the water right as you go in, you activate the mammalian dive reflex. And this reflex increases the so-called parasympathetic activity of the autonomic nervous system, which is just nerd speak for it lowers your heart rate, it makes you calmer, and it makes you better able to tolerate stress. So try this next time. Go. You could even just put your face in before- I go right under. You go right under. Yeah. So that's the I right way to do it. I plug my nose, I go right under. So I didn't know this. A lot of people that do deliberate cold get headaches, they don't feel good. And a lot of times it's because they slowly immerse themselves up to the neck. And then right at that interface of cold and hot, it, it creates change, vasoconstriction right below, a little bit vasodilation above. They get headaches. They don't feel good. The heart rate is way too high. Putting your face under Isn't really that anxiety, helps. though? I, I just feel like that's all psychological. I really do. Because there's, there's a moment when you get in the cold where there's a part of your brain that goes, let's get out of here. You can get out of this if you will just get out right now. And you got to go shut the fuck up. But if you don't say shut the fuck up, then that thing runs rampant through your brain. And that kicks your heart rate up and that kicks your anxiety up. I really think it's psychological. Well, it's psychological and it's physiological. So here's right, what, physiological yeah. because of psychological. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So here's what we know for sure. For the first 20 to 30 seconds of cold shock when you get in, mm -hmm. which is how it's described, that prefrontal cortex that normally is, has the job of handling context and says shh to the reflexes of the brain and the impulses of the brain is not active for 20 to 30 seconds. So your reflex to get the hell out of there mm. is very – there's a – Clear and logical reason for that. After that 20 or 30 seconds, the forebrain starts coming online again. That's your opportunity to start negotiating with yourself of, oh, this is actually good for me. This 
this is, I can handle this. I got through that so I can get through the next one. What I've been doing recently is trying to not go for time, but going for the only way I can describe this would be walls. Like sometimes just getting in the thing is a wall for me. So I go, okay, I got over one wall, just getting in the damn thing. Then I'm like, oh God, here it comes. Four brains shutting down. I'm like panicking. I'm going to get through this. And then I'm watching for when I have the impulse to get out. And what I start to notice is that the, the gaps between those walls start getting longer and longer. Good morning.